Hello friends, welcome to the cool Vedas, that's Vedas code. In the last video we saw how Drupada was doubtful about the dharma of his daughter marrying five men. And we also saw how Drishtadyumna, Yudhishthira and Kunti were discussing the same matter when Vedavyasa, the great Rishi, had entered the palace. Today, let's see if Vedavyasa can help Drupada and others to come to a conclusion about the dilemma they are in. This story has been mentioned in Vaivahika Parva in Adi Parva. Let's listen along and find out more about polyandry in Mahabharata. So, all the Pandavas and the illustrious king of the Panchalas and even the others present there stood up and saluted with reverence the illustrious Rishi Krishna Dvaipayana. The high soul Rishi, saluting them in return and inquiring about their welfare, sat down on a golden carpet. And commanded by Krishna Dvaipayana, those foremost of men all sat down on costly seats. A little later, the son of Prashata, Drupada, in a very sweet and humble voice, asked the illustrious Rishi about the wedding of his daughter, the princess Draupadi. And he said, How, O illustrious one, can one woman become the wife of many men without being sinned? Oh, tell me truly all about this, O great Rishi. Hearing these words, Vyasa replied, This practice, O king, has been opposed to usage and the Vedas and hence has become obsolete. I desire, however, to hear what the opinion of each of you is upon this matter before I give you my opinion. Hearing these words of the Rishi, Tripada spoke first. He said, The practice is sinful in my opinion. Being opposed to both usage and the Vedas, it is a sin. O oh, best of Brahmanas, nowhere have I seen many men having one wife. The illustrious ones also of former ages never had such a usage amongst them. The wise should never commit a sin. I, therefore, can never make up mind to act in this way. This practice always appears to be of doubtful morality to me. Now, after Drupada had spoke, Drishchadumna spoke up. He said, O bull amongst Brahmanas, how can, O Brahmana, the elder brother, if he is of good disposition, approach the wife of his younger brother? The ways of morality are very subtle and therefore we know them not very well. We cannot therefore say what is conformable to morality and what is not. We cannot do such a deed with a safe consciousness. Indeed, O Brahmana, I can never lift my tongue to say something like, Let Draupadi become the common wife of five brothers. I can never say that. After Drishtadyumna had spoke, Yudhishthira said, My tongue never utters an untruth, and my heart never inclines to what is sinful. When my heart approves of it, it can never be sinful. I have heard in the Purana that a lady of name Jatila, the foremost of all virtuous women belonging to the race of Gotama, had married seven rishis. And I have also heard of an ascetic's daughter who was born out of a tree, had in former times united in marriage with ten brothers who all bear the same name of Prachetas and who were all souls of exalted ascetism. O oh, foremost of all that are acquainted with the rules of morality, it is said that obedience to, obedience to superior is ever meritorious. And among all superiors, it is well known that the mother is the foremost. Even my mother has commanded us to enjoy Draupadi as we do with anything obtained as arms. It is for this, O best of Brahmanas, that I regard the proposal act as virtuous. Now, Kunti spoke up. 
She said, The act is even so as virtuous as Yudhishthira has said it to be. I greatly fear, O Brahmana, that my speech should become untrue. How shall I be safe from untruth words? Now, Vyasa spoke up. He said, O oh, amiable one, how shall you be saved from the consequence of untruth? Even this is eternal virtue. I will not, O king of the Panchalas, discourse on this before everyone. But you alone shall listen to me when I disclose how this practice has been established and why it is to be regarded as old and eternal. There is no doubt that what Yudhishthira has said is quite agreeable to virtue. And then the illustrious Vyasa, the master Dvaipayana, rose and taking hold of Drupada's hand led him to a private apartment. The Pandavas and Kunti and Drishyadyumna sat there waiting for the return of Vyasa and Drupada. Meanwhile, Dvaipayana began his discourse with the illustrious monarch to explain him about the practice of polyandry could be not regarded as sinful. Now, now, can Veda Vyasa convince Drupada that his daughter can marry five men? Let's read along and find out about this. Please like, share and subscribe our channel for more Mahabharata stories. Do not forget to press the bell icon. Thank you. Namaste.